Dr. Christian's office, Judy speaking. Oh, hello, Mrs. D'Angelo. How's young Carlo? Did he enjoy going away to camp? It's the Vaseline Program, the only show in radio where the audience writes the script. Tonight, the spotlight is on Louisville, Kentucky, and the prize goes to William W. Douglas for his comedy, Room Clerk, starring Gene Herschel as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp as Judy Price. Really? Little Carlo helped fight a brush fire, hmm? Well, that was a brave thing to do. Burned, he... Oh, my. Oh, I see. Well, thank heavens it was a minor burn. It's almost completely healed already, hmm? <laughs> Who was the camp doctor? Oh, he's very good. Vaseline petroleum jelly, hmm? Oh, that's grand. No wonder it healed so quickly. Yes, there's nothing better for minor burns than Vaseline petroleum jelly. Medical reports on serious burn cases overseas tell about ever so many remarkable recoveries thanks to a new treatment that includes the local application of petroleum jelly. Yes, that's right. Vaseline petroleum jelly is the world's leading brand. Oh, it's ideal for household burns. You just cover the burn with Vaseline petroleum jelly spread on fine mesh gauze. Then bandage firmly, but not tightly. If the burn is deep or covers a wide area, always call the doctor. Mm-hmm. I'd keep Vaseline petroleum jelly right in the medicine chest. It comes in both jars and handy tubes. Well, call again soon. Goodbye. And so to our prize play, Room Clerk. The curtain rises on a warm afternoon in River's End with Dr. Christian and the perfect secretary, Judy Price, in the doctor's office just finishing the day's work. Dr. Christian's office. This here is George, ma'am. I'm the bellhop over here at the United States Hotel. Uh, the room clerk's done passed out on me. Hmm? Oh, almost. Uh, he's sick, ma'am. He's plenty sick. You say it's the room clerk of the United States Hotel. He is ill? Yes, and he sure is. He's Mr. Charlie, and he asked me to call Dr. Christian. He wants a doctor to come right over. Over where? Over at the hotel. Uh, Mr. Charlie was working, but he ain't now. He fell over. Something wrong with his heart, they say. Well, now don't worry. I'll tell Dr. Christian right away. Oh, thank you, ma'am, and thank you. But please hurry. Dr. Christian? Yes, Judy. One of the bellboys at the hotel just phoned. He said that the room clerk just had a heart attack. He wants you to come right over. Room clerk? At the United States Hotel? <laughs> now you know we have only one hotel. It's a man named Charlie, somebody or other. Oh, then it must be my old friend Charlie Stubbs. I'll drive right over. Hmm. Heart attack again, eh? Well, Charlie's getting pretty old to be doing night work with that bad heart, too. Still, clerking in a hotel isn't hard work. In fact, uh, it should be an easy job. I'm Dr. Christian. Hey, yes, I'm sure glad you're here. Where's the patient? Where's Charlie Stubbs? Oh, Willie and me, we helped Mr. Charlie over to the van in the lobby so he could lie down, Doctor. I see. That was good work. Uh, George? Uh, yes, sir. That's me. I'm George. Well, George, we must get all those people away. Those people crowded around Mr. Charlie. Uh, yes, sir. I know that. I know they shouldn't crowd up on him, but they wouldn't pay no attention to me. I'm sorry, but you'll, uh, you'll have to ask your people to move away. We... I have a very sick man here, and he needs plenty of air. Uh, please move back. Uh, what's the matter with him? Is he drunk? Not any more than you are, sir. He's ill. Apparently, he has just had a heart attack. Now, will you please move back with the others? Oh, George. Uh, yes, sir. George, uh, get me a little water and a glass, will you? About uh, one-fourth of a glass, I should say. Uh, yes, sir. Come right up, doctor. George, I've done all I can for your Mr. Charlie here. Yes, sir. That uh, hypodermic will hold things for a while. I've called the hospital, and they're sending an ambulance for him. He'll have to spend oh, but about... But, Doctor, who's going to take care of the desk till Mr. Alex come in for the next trick? 
The next trick? Yes, sir. You see, we all work three shifts around here. Mr. Charlie, who works from 3 to 11. Then Mr. Alec come on and work from 11 to 7. Then Mr. Clarence work from 7 to 3 when Mr. Charlie is supposed to show up again. Now, that's the way it is. But who's going to work out the rest of Mr. Charlie's trick tonight if you send him to the hospital? Why, where's the manager? Well, he's Mr. Thomas. He's going to Chicago for an important conference. But that don't leave nobody because Mr. Alex ain't coming in till 12. He, he's out in a party or something. I mean, Mr. Charlie wasn't going to work extra for him. Well, uh, why don't you get behind the desk and give out the keys and mail yourself? That's all there is to do, isn't it? Yeah, sir, that's about all. But me or Willie wouldn't go behind that desk for a million dollars, Bo. Well, uh... And the guests is getting pretty riled up. They can't get their keys or their mail or nothing. Hmm. Mr. Charlie's sure going to get in trouble about this. There's going to be one awful mix-up. Uh, couldn't you go back to the desk, boss, and give out the mail and the keys so the guests will quit fussing and hollering? Me? Why, I don't know Mr. the first Charlie, thing. sure appreciate it. Keep them out of a jam, boss. Well, uh, what has to be done? Oh, you just sort out the mail and put in them little boxes on the back wall and give out the keys so the guests can get in their rooms and maybe answer the phone and tell everybody we're full up, tight. That, that's all, boss. You can do it easy. Please do it, boss, for Mr. Charlie. Mm. All right, George. I'll do it. Oh, that's fine. But you'll have to stay close by to help me. Oh, I'll do that, boss. I'll stick right with you on the outside of the desk. Hey, come on around back this way. Now, that's the door to the back office. Now, be sure to shut it after you're inside. It locks itself. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Charlie done left it open when he staggered out and called for me and Willie. Hey, Willie, he's the elevator boy. Uh, oh, oh, there you are. Give me the key to 308, will you? I've uh, got to get up to my room and shave. Just a minute, please. Uh, that's the box. Right there. No, no, no. Over to the left. There, there, there. That's it. Now, any mail? Uh, what's the name, please? Noble. C.H. Noble. Hey, uh, look for mine, too, will you? Charles B. Stewart. Yeah, yeah mine, too. Well, well, I am expecting a telegram coming. Now, now, just a minute, please. Please, just a minute. Now, just a minute. Please. Please, just a minute. Uh, this mail will have to be sorted. I'll, I'll give you your room keys now so you can all get into your rooms, but the mail will have to wait until late on the evening. When I have time to sort it out and place it in your boxes, now we... 312, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Three, five. Five. See if there's a telegram there. Here you are, sir. Uh, that's fine. Well, could you get me 316, please? 314 and 316 is what I want. Uh, has 213 and 316. Now, uh... 316, thank you. Uh, now, please, just a minute. Uh, please. I'll have to make a phone call. <laughs> Dr. Christian's office. Judy, Judy, oh, I'm glad I got you before you got away. What's wrong? Is there anything? Judy, drop everything and come right over here. Where are you? At the United States Hotel in Hurry. Is it an emergency? Do you need anything? It's an emergency, all right. I'm in an awful jam. I'll be right over. I'm sorry we haven't any rooms. Room? Who wants a room? I don't want a room. I'm sorry we have filled up. Filled up? Filled up? Oh, I, oh, I don't want a room. I, I, got, I got a room now. It's, it's uh, number, I'll see. It's uh, room number uh, 402. Uh, that's a house phone you're talking over, boss. Oh, and uh, what is it you want, uh, Fourteen hundred and thirty seven. 1737. Uh, what's the vice? Uh, what's the vice? Uh, uh, ginger ale. Uh, uh, seven ice and set it right up, will you? Yes, we will. We'll send it right up. George, uh, see if you can get some ice and ginger ale up to room 402, will you? Yes, yeah, so sir, right away. But I'll get Willie to take care of him so I can stay here with you. Good evening. I'm Horace P. Tuttle. I'd like to have my room, please. Your room? Yes. Well, we, we haven't any rooms for rent. Why, why, for a reservation? I'm sorry, we simply haven't any rooms. We're filled up. But I wired. You've got to have a room for me. I'm a salesman. I've stopped here before, and you've got to treat me right. And I want a sample room, too. I'm sorry, we still haven't any rooms vacant. Now, look, my good man. I've got two big sample trunks on the way over here from the station. I've got to have a place to sleep and a place to display my line, my merchandise, my samples, and besides... Of course, if you'll excuse me, the sample room is full up with soldiers. We've got ten cots in there and a soldier in each cot. I allows it ain't going to be easy to move them out. Soldiers like to sleep. Yes, but, but, but... Well, uh, why don't you try the YMCA? They might have... My a... good man. Do you know my line, my samples? I sell ladies' lingerie. Can you imagine me trying to display silly slips, fragile nightgowns, and, and uh, well, so forth, in the halls or lobby of the YMCA? 
Can you picture that? No. No, I can't. Of course not. Well, you'll hear about this. Judy. I came as quick as I could, Dr. Christian. What's the trouble? Everything. Oh, George, uh, take Miss Judy around to the back. Uh, I'll let her in. Yes, sir. Uh, I've taken the simple job of a night clerk in this hotel, Judy. Huh? To help out my old friend Charlie. That uh, bellboy George talked me into it somehow. At any rate, that's our job until 12 o'clock. Our job? Absolutely. I'm the room clerk. You are my assistant. Well, but... Now, first, I want you to sort out this pile of mail. Place the room numbers and the envelopes and file them in these little boxes back here. That alone will be a big help. <laughs> All right, Dr. Christian. Uh, and hurry before that crowd of guests comes back. United States Hotel? I'm sorry, we haven't any rooms. Uh, clerk speaking. Could you all send me up a teeny little bit of soap? I'm just dying to take a shower. Oh, uh, right away, ma'am. Uh, oh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, what's your room number? 204. George, I hope you're taking all this down. Yes, I'm getting it. Hello. There's a strange man trying to get in my room. Oh, he's in. Quick, George. There's trouble in room 313. Let's go up there. Oh, my. Judy, take care of the desk. And okay. You, you stay here, George. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll go with Willie. And, Judy, give these orders to for Charlie Stops to the ambulance driver. Uh, here you are, Dr. Christian. Third floor. Number 313 is right down the hall. Uh, you come along with me, Willie. Let the guests walk up. This must... They must be desperate. Yes, sir. Help! Help! You get out of here! Oh, won't somebody save me? Help! Help! Here, here. What's going on here? That man. He came in my room. He has a key. What? Sure, I got a key. You gave it to me, doctor. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to molest this lady. He is, too. He opened the door and looked at me. Me and my night gun. Look, doctor, I'm Harry Blake. I'm a permanent here. I've lived in this hotel for a couple of years. When I saw you'd given me the key to 313 instead of 213, which I asked for, I figured they'd at last change my room and move my stuff up here. I've been moved before, and I asked Charlie weeks ago to move me away from that nut in 215 with a loud radio. That's all. You say I gave you the key to this room? Sure you did. How else could I have it? You handed me the key to 313, which is in the box right over 213. Common mistake for a new man. The room numbers on the boxes are at the top, right next to the key on the bottom of the box above. You saw my number 213 and grabbed the key just above it, which was the wrong key. That's the whole story. Well, that explains things, doesn't it, madam? Oh, I suppose so. But please go and leave me alone. Honest, doctor, I was trying to apologize to the old dame, but she was yelling so loud I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just a case of misunderstanding. Oh, Dr. Christian, I almost forgot to tell you. This lady was yelling so, but there's another lady in 301, and she's crying kind of soft-like. What? Yes, sir. She got a little girl who's sick, and she asked me to get the doctor for her. They's new in Rivers End, only been here two or three days. Could you take a look at the doctor, at the girl doctor? Uh, certainly. Room uh, 301, did you say? Yes, sir. Oh, here we are. Now, Willie, you run down and get Miss Judy to give you my medical bag, will you? Uh, be sure to warn her about those keys and box numbers. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right away, doctor. <laughs> Mrs. Edwards, your little daughter isn't in immediate danger. However, she's a very sick little girl. She has scarlet fever. Uh oh. Scarlet fever? Oh, Dr. Christian, what will I do? My husband's in the army. He was to meet us here tomorrow for his furlough. We can't afford to stay here very long. I'm sorry, but I'll have to report this. And we'll have to quarantine the whole hotel if she stays here. But, Doctor, uh, excuse me, please, sir. But we've had this trouble before. Uh, we just scoot the sick people out uh, kind of quick-like to the hotel, uh, to the hospital. Then we locks up the rooms and fumigates it so everything's safe. We sterilizes all the blankets and sheets and stuff. And that seems to be okay with the city health people. We just can't lock everybody up in the hotel, Doctor, sir. Well, uh... Oh, I suppose we could do it that way. Mrs. Edwards... Get all, all of your things together. I'll call the hospital and have them send the ambulance for you and your daughter. 
And when your husband calls here for you tomorrow, uh, we'll tell him where you've gone. Then you can make other arrangements. And now don't you worry. Everything will come out all right. Yes, um, that's right. Uh, Dr. Christian, he sure can fix things. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, Dr. Christian. We'll see you at the hospital, of course. Oh, and your fee. We'll manage that as soon as my husband arrives. Uh, Mrs. Edwards, sir. We'll discuss all of that later. Come on, buddy. Ah, I wonder how Miss Judy's getting along. Uh, she ain't, sir. Huh? Uh, Miss Judy ain't doing so good with them keys and the mail. Uh, she's making the same mistake you did, uh, only more so. I wonder, but it was too late, and they's crowding at the desk, exchanging keys, and that man in full, too. He's getting pretty high by this time, and he phones the desk every minute. Uh, we better go downstairs, sir. Oh, thank goodness you've returned, Dr. Christian. Having trouble, Judy? <laughs> you know I am. Whoever numbered these boxes, well... Oh, the ambulance came and I sent Charlie Stubbs to the hospital. Good. Now call them again and tell them to come right back. Huh? We have another patient for them. An isolation case. Scarlet fever. Oh! Room 301. Also make arrangements for a cut for the child's mother. Yes, doctor. And... Will you try to straighten out some of these wrong keys and mail while I phone? Oh, yes, yes, I'll do what I can. Could I speak to you for a moment, sir? Why, certainly, ma'am. Could I please have a room? My son will get his furlough tomorrow, and we're to meet here in River's End at this hotel. Oh, I'm very sorry, but we simply haven't any rooms vacant. Yes, I know. The war and every soldier's folks trying to spend a few days with him, but could you... Well... It's nearly 12 o'clock and, and so late. Could I stay here in a chair in the lobby for the night? I'll pay you. Your son's in the army, eh? Well, Mother, you just go over there and find a nice soft chair and rest. Listen. Now, don't tell anybody. But I have just had a hunch and that somebody is going to move out. Of, you can you can have their room. Oh, thank you so much. Now, now go over and sit in the chair until I call you. Now, uh, George. Yes, I'm right here. But how are you going to fix up the soldier's mother when we ain't got no room? Uh, wait a minute, George. All right. Hello. Clerk speaking. Hey, listen. What kind of hotel is this, anyhow? Every, every time I open any door in my room, it's the bathroom. Uh, I can't get out. I, I want to go out in the hall and get something. Uh, I want to come down to the lobby. Uh, will you stand up, a boy? Right away. That fellow just about ready to pass out, doctor. That's what I'm counting on, George. Mm -hmm. And about the soldier's mother. I'm going to show you a new trick in this hotel business. Well. Have you an extra curtain storeroom? Yes, sir. We got plenty. Well, I want you and Willie to take a curtain, some blankets down the furnace room and set it up. Yes, sir. Oh, it's nice and warm down there. Then you're to go up to room 402 and have the man get down to the cut. To the cut. Why, in his condition, he won't know the difference. Mm -hmm. So tell him that you are hiding him from the police or something. Mm -hmm. or, or who are looking for him. To arrest him for being drunk. Yes, sir. They really would if he comes down the lobby and tries to go outside for something else to drink. But you got something there. Now, in the morning, the boys can tell him that they saved him from spending the night in jail. As soon as you and Willie get him to sleep, then uh -huh. call me on the house phone and rush up and change the linen in 402. Is that perfectly clear? Boss, it's perfect, period. We'll fix him right up. You know whose car that is? Out in front of the hotel? It's a little black coupe. My, uh... Yes, that must be my car, officer. Your car? Now, you know better than to park out there. That's a 15-minute limit street. There was an emergency here. I had a heart attack. I'm Dr. Christian. Oh, so you're a doctor, hey? What are you doing behind that desk? You're a hotel clerk. <laughs> yeah, you mean I'm trying to be. I'm Charlie Stubbs' doctor. He had a heart attack early this morning. I attended him, sent him to the hospital, spent the rest of the evening trying to hold down the job until the... Next man report. I'm Alex, the next man, as you call him. Uh, you've done a fine job, Dr. Christian. I just talked to Willie and George. You've probably saved the hotel from a lot of lawsuits. Now, Mike, listen. Be a good guy and forget about that parking ticket. This really is Dr. Christian. Uh, okay, Alex. Eh? Good night, Doctor. Good night. Hello. Yeah, it's okay, boss. Fine, George. Oh, uh, Mother, uh, come over here a minute, please. Mother, I have a nice room for you. There's the key. Room number 402. Oh, you don't know how much I appreciate this. Yes, I do. But it's mothers like you 
that all of us appreciate. Now, please go back to your chair for a few minutes until the bellboy comes to show you to your room. Say, how in the world did you do that? 402 has oh, been rapid. It's a long, long story, Alex. Get George and Willie to tell you so you can carry on the plot in the morning. Well, as for me, I'm going home. Miss Judy, my secretary nurse, and I have had a very, very eventful evening. Are you ready to go, Judy? Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> good night, Miss Judy. And good night, Dr. Christian. And many thanks. Good night. Good night. night. Ah, what a night. Oh, you drive, Judy. I'm all worn out. All right. Now, how in the world did I ever let myself get into such a position? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just you, Dr. Christian. <sighs> You're always trying to help someone with their troubles. Only this time you seem to have taken on quite a load. Boss, boss, wait a minute. Huh? Why, it's George. Hold it, Judy. Oh, boss, you can't go yet. You've got to come back. Room 308 is having a baby. And it's having it right now. Hurry, boss. Cut the motor, Judy. Hand me my bags. Here we go again. And the curtain comes down on another Dr. Christian Prize play with our star, Gene Hersholt, waiting to greet you. Man, you help make every first impression a good impression when you're careful about grooming. Keep your hair looking its well-groomed best. If it's stubborn, stiff, and dry, if you're troubled with loose, flaking dandruff, remember these nuisances are signs of dry scalp. Combat dry scalp. Check it quickly, easily, with Vaseline hair tonic. Vaseline hair tonic contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients. It actually supplements natural scalp oils. Just five drops a day, applied with comb or directly on the hair, check dry scalp and keep your hair perfectly groomed. Also, a brisk Vaseline hair tonic massage before each shampoo loosens dandruff, relieves itchy tightness. Vaseline hair tonic is the ideal care for both scalp and hair. And the proof is this. More bottles of Vaseline hair tonic are sold today than of any other hair tonic in America. Buy, try, Vaseline hair tonic. Vaseline hair tonic is one of the many Vaseline brand products made by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. And now here is Gene Herschel. Thank you very much. The prize play room clerk you heard tonight is the work of William W. Douglas of Louisville, Kentucky. And he tells us that he actually took a job as room clerk in a hotel to provide an authentic background for his play. Next week we plan to present a prize play called Our Daughter Barbara by Louise Pickens of Charlotte, North Carolina. We invite you to listen next Wednesday evening to the Vaseline program, same time, and same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Miserable with hay fever? Well, don't let pesky airborne pollen make you suffer needlessly. Guard against it with a little Vaseline petroleum jelly in each nostril each morning. For relief from hay fever, ask for, try, Vaseline petroleum jelly. <laughs> Remember, it's a new prize play, Our Daughter Barbara, next week on the Dr. Christian program. Don't miss it. Bob Anderson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>